Okay, so now that I've been babbling away for uh, altogether is about three hours worth of these videos, and I was hoping I had it all done in less than an hour, and that didn't work out. But I've gone pretty much through my own personal timeline from the first day of playing, uh, getting my first trumpet as a kid in the uh, fall of 1959 up until now. And this is uh, March of uh, 2024. So 65 years later, I want to circle back to the beginning now and sort of describe how I wish I would have started as a kid, whether a teacher was actually showing me how to do it or possibly maybe I was picking up an instrument on my own with nobody showing me anything, which is how I've learned to do a lot of things. And, and uh, But that was not the case with the trumpet. So I had started out in fourth grade. There were maybe like three, four, five of us fourth graders that all got our new rental trumpets in the school. And we're in, a, you know, like a, a the room, they uh, like a storage room or something where where they were given the lessons. And so, you know, we got our new rental trumpet and we got a lesson book, Easy Steps to the Band. That's what it was called. And we're sitting next to each other, sort of scrunched together, like I'm scrunched in here. And so the music stands in front here and the teacher says like about like uh, buzzing into the mouthpiece, you know, almost, almost like kissing the mouthpiece, maybe. I don't think she used the word pucker. That word uh, came into play later on. And she didn't use the word smile either, uh, which is another word that comes in by, from some people, but kind of demonstrated and had us all, you know, like sort of like that. And, and, you know, then we put the, the mouthpiece in the horn and all, and we're all in like this. And me with my uh, bad eyesight, I'm straining to look at music. And, uh, you know, they're explaining there's a treble clef there and the names of the lines. And, and there's a whole note on the second line G and all that. And a zero underneath it for no, no valves. And we're all like this and all that and blow in. Like this, just like this, and, and whatever we did. Okay. All that was no good now in hindsight. I mean, okay, so we got a bunch of kids here. It's not the same as one on one. But what I would do now, get rid of the music stand. Uh, it's okay to have the, the book, but to start blowing, probably even maybe have them standing up. And now, you know, like I in, earlier, I went into the. Uh, the whole thing with, with the, the pencil and all that. But for a kid, you know, fourth grader, eight years old, even that's too complicated. Don't need to deal with that. Kid's too excited. Kid just wants to, I mean, I just wanted to blow right into the horn. You don't need any steps like that. Maybe not even talking about the diaphragm breathing yet. I would say something like, stand up straight. Head straight, horn straight, get into that. Like, and, and plus another important part, I would be doing it along with them. So some of it, you don't even have to say it. You're just, you're, you're demonstrating it. Picture's worth a thousand words, right? And so, okay, so we're standing up straight. Have everybody hold their horn up. Think of a target, like aim your sound. Point your bell at something, you know, something on the wall over there. Or better yet, if you might be outside, some kind of a target that's, you know, even 100 yards away or whatever. And then, wouldn't have to get into explaining about the corners yet or anything. Say something like, close your lips lightly, hold the horn up, and just start blowing some air, you know, and think of blowing the air through the horn. I mean, it's almost like imagining... That the, the, that the horn is straightened out. It'd be nice to do it with a herald trumpet or something like that. It, you know, it'd be a, a, like a better image of just blowing straight through the horn and, you know, blowing that airstream at, at, at a target, which is also sort of even giving the uh, concept of a focused and directed sound as opposed to, you know, just all spread out, uh, directing your air, directing your sound directing your thought process, all those things, directing your, you know, spiritual energy, all that stuff. And then I'd have them just start blow, blowing 
you know, straight through and, and, and just see what comes out, you know, like, because it has to, it has to sort of settle in on its own. Uh, any high spots they have with their teeth, you know, they, they have to kind of feel all, all that out on their own. But I, I would be, I don't know about ins insisting, but sort of, and, and demonstrating, you know, holding your horn up. Of course, most kids, it's not going to sound like that the first time around. It could be anything, as as we all know. They might come in high. I've all, I've I've shown people, and and the first thing that comes out is something like, like that's the first. It wasn't like that with me. I was more than an octave below that because I undershot that G in the staff when I was a kid. So that's how I, I you know, if it was if I was showing one kid or an adult. Or, or you know, a couple of them, and just start by blowing some air, and 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 just getting some kind of a feel for the sound, and you know where 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 the different kinds of slots and stuff are. You know, I mean, as we all know, that like the first time you're blowing through the horn, you you have no idea what's going on. But if their horn is up. Rather than down, you know, and all all kinds of weird posture and everything, standing up, you know, your your weight is balanced on your two feet. This this also becomes the leftover from uh, my athletic uh, approach to things. And then just take it from there. Maybe that first time around. I mean, one thing I I would not get into too much, which is the way that I started is reading music beating your foot you know a whole note is is four beats and a whole rest is four beats and you're counting and all that i wouldn't start there i would absolutely not start there i would start with getting some kind of a sound and trying to find something settle in somewhere so they know where their magic spot is you know and of course they're not going to know that right away but I, I would just emphasize that and also um, more just mental, mental approach. Like, don't be afraid to blow it. Of course, then, you know, some kids are, 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 are the opposite. You know, they're going to come in. You know, they're going <laughs> to, they're just going to blow as, la as hard and as loud as they can right away. Okay, you, you got you to gotta kind of cool them out a little bit. But uh, on the other hand, it's always good to see that at least some of that aggression. I mean, we all know that we can pound our chops and, and, and you know, even get bleeding and stuff like that. We all know that if we carry all that too far, that can happen. But I don't think you need to put that into the kid's head right away. <laughs> I mean, because the way I was taught was already on defense from the get-go, like, you know, be careful and, you know, you know don't hurt yourself and, and all this. And one thing feeds the other. If you're sitting down, music stand was there, especially when I had, uh, you know, with the vision problems I had, leaning into the music and all this and bringing the bell down and all that, that's, that's the end of your jaw position and everything else. So same thing with trombone. You know, trombone's a little harder because it's a little heavier and, you know, you got to deal with the slide. That's another thing have to instill right away of getting the obstacles out of the way of the slide so that you can hold your horn up. Whereas, you know, back down here, the same thing with the, you know, with the music, you know, you got the music stand here and you're playing underneath, you know, that's just going to make the condition such that your jaw will go back, especially if you're naturally receded, which I am, and, and probably most people are. I just want to go a little further. I thought I was done. <laughs> I, I Just a, another word on uh, st like starting somebody out, getting a sound out, then what to do next. And like I was saying, if I was showing this person, I would be probably doing it right along with them. Matching notes, for one thing, whatever, it would know, like, like back to that G in the staff. Let's say you got a, somebody just started the instrument. And like what I said a couple minutes ago, trying to find that spot, you know, where a sound comes out. One time I started a kid 
and uh, he didn't get his sound out for 45 minutes and 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 uh, ha- about a half hour or so and then just before the the lesson was over his sound came in and he, he in the end he ended up having pretty good chops but it was kind of funny getting him through you know cuz he was getting frustrated you know he's getting all air balls <laughs> you know I'm and I'm telling him it's okay it's okay you're looking good there it's going to come out and, and then sure enough you know, right, right at the end of the lesson, he started getting some sound, and then, then he never had any trouble after that. So back to this hypothetical beginner. Let's say they found like their magic spot, and a G and a staff came out. Then, you know, maybe I'd be matching it with them. Then try to. They could be experimenting with other valves and stuff like that, not even knowing what the fingerings are or anything like that. Like I said, that you know, they might have a lesson book there, but we're, we're doing this and it has nothing to do with the lesson book. Maybe I'm saying, okay, play that note there, Gina staff. Maybe, you know, maybe that maybe it kind of locks in a little bit. And I, then maybe I'd be saying something like, well, push the second valve down. That's F sharp. And we'd maybe mess around with that. Then at some point, I would I would try to get them to start, you know, slurring either up or down, you know, into the next slot, up or down. I'd say, you know, blow blow harder, blow harder, and and uh, the the analogy of um, the garden hose, where you put your thumb over the end of the garden hose so you can spray the water farther. I use that analogy. And try to push, push up into to the C, the next note, with, and maybe I start telling them about your about your diaphragm at that point, because all all this stuff is about air in the end. But uh, you know, you can't, you certainly can't hit them with everything right, you know, right in the first five minutes. And besides, there's no sense trying to make them into a head case. They got the whole rest of their life to to work on that themselves. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, the whole idea is to make them feel pretty comfortable in the lesson. You know, you can, as we all know, the instrument can, uh, by itself, can make you into a head case. So, and these were all Roy things back, you know, he was doing this on the palm. Same thing. So, I think that would that was would be the the next step. Of course, then you know when you're showing a student, especially a new student, you kind of got to go where they're going too. You know, so there's some give and take here to see because everybody is different. So uh, anyway, I've enjoyed babbling for these few hours, and uh, I hope uh, somebody finds this informative, possibly entertaining, and. Uh, like I said, what what I would hope the most is that even if it's just one person, you know, that that had the uh, the turmoil that I did in the early stages, and even in some of the later stages for other reasons, but but it was all related to uh, the way I started. I I look at this 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 is like I'm getting a mulligan. I you know at, at age 73 now I'm ju- I'm just starting over as a trumpet player and i probably don't have 65 years left in me from this point on uh but uh because it it took me 65 years to get where i'm at now on the other hand when i do practice now what what goes through my mind is the fact that this is the way it should have been when i was a kid now of course i i didn't have all this experience then but the the way i would be trying to get somebody to start would be on the right path rather than the wrong one, which is a uh, wrong one in terms of chops. I mean, because a lot of the other stuff was the right path. I don't re- regret the the fact that I w- was reading music right away because I, you know, I ended up being a pretty good reader and and you know and you know writing and arranging and and stuff like that. Theory, a lot of it came pretty easily. On the other hand, as I've said before, this whole chop debacle starting from before before the horn even came up to my face for the first time the mindset was already wrong so i was defeated before i even before i even got it up to my face the first time so 
that's the purpose of uh, this discussion is is hopefully to to save somebody from uh, from having to go the long way around. I thought I was done, but uh, I forgot a couple of points. So this, this will only be a couple minutes. Well, at one point I wanted to, one thing I wanted to demonstrate was when I first was playing as a trumpet as a kid. Now I'm going to talk about the the angle. I'm not going to get into the, this this Reinhardt idea of pivoting or anything, uh, although it, it, that sort of can is is a little bit related to what I what I'm going to just talk about briefly now. I just want to talk about the the angle up and down that I use now compared to when I was a kid. Of course, I didn't start on trombone as a kid, but when I switched to trombone, this kind of a, a, a you know applied the same way to the trombone. I don't have the trombone here right now. But. So, in other words, this is where I'm at now. Okay, I'm, I'm seated now. If I'm standing up, the trumpet is pretty much parallel to the ground. And uh, I had mentioned head straight, horn straight. So in other words, it doesn't have to be perfect right angles and, and stuff like that, but uh, basically head straight, horn straight, your head is just kind of straight. And then the angle of the horn is roughly parallel to the ground. So when the horn is on your chops, it's roughly going to be perpendicular to your teeth and your face. But when I was a kid, I, I'm I'm not even going to try to play that way now. When I was a kid, I was down here somewhere. I mean, this looks like a good maybe 30 degrees the angle higher from, from what it was when I was a kid. I just wanted to make that point. And then the other thing I just wanted to demonstrate because I didn't really get into talking about the, the upper register too much. Like when I was talking a, a few minutes ago about the beginning exercises with the kids, and then pushing up into the next slot with increased air pressure coming from your diaphragm, and you know whether you're compressing in your chest or however you get to it. Your throat, of course, you don't want to constrict your throat you know, that's the thing, if your head's weighed down or something like that, now you start closing your throat off. So you, you certainly want to have all your airways uh, open and so the air can go freely. So then that little exercise I did, a, you know, a couple seconds ago, this is all out of Roy Stevens' playbook. You just keep building that air, air compression, and uh, it just keep going higher and higher. And you're trying not to close your teeth off. That's where, where Roy always talked about like a, a fixed jaw position uh, and that, that gets back to the pencil and all that, but I don't have to bring that out now. So you're, you're, you're going to, you know, try to keep your teeth with a, a little bit of opening. He said quarter inch, it might be less. And that's it. That's the basic idea with that. You can do it softer. So that's it. Of course, probably a, a beginning kid is not going to be able to do that. But like I had mentioned before, the person that started me first as a kid was not a trumpet player. It was a clarinet player. So there was no way that she was going to ever be able to demonstrate this stuff to me. She could have uh, matched notes. We could have done some of that. But as far as this chop stuff, there, there was no way regardless of what she knew or didn't know, there's no way that she could have demonstrated it. Naturally, if if, if you're with a student and you, you've got your instrument there and, and you're talking, you can, if, especially if you got the matching notes with you, you know, you can kind of, kind of lead them through all that and, 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 and away you go. Okay. Talk to you later. <laughs>